A good evening once again. Um, a Course in Miracles. Tonight we do workbook lesson 188, 188. And the lesson is the peace of God is shining in me now. Now, again, it's a slight play of words. Um, a more accurate way to say that would be, I am now aware that the peace of God is always shining in me. Because it's not like the peace of God is shining in you now. It's always been there, but it's been blocked by our obstacles to peace. What are our obstacles to peace? Unforgiven thoughts, past, and that then gets projected into the future, fear of the future. Everything, every emotion, every sensation, every feeling, and everything that happens at us in the world is created by misperception. What's misperception? Seeing incorrectly. The mind sees itself unlike what it is. It sees the illusion instead of what's there. It sees objects as opposed to the light that's always there. And light and peace and awareness are identical. Slightly different words for the exact same sense awareness. So the peace of God is shining in me now is an admission of awareness. It's I'm aware of the transcendence that's happened. Now, this is not a word one says. A lot of Christian people, a lot of religious people, a lot of spiritual people will say things like the peace of God is in me. And yet they don't feel peace at all. This is a knowing. And in actual fact, when the peace of God is shining in you, very seldomly do we speak. We we have a tendency to just withdraw into the into the void, abide in the source. And there's very little speaking or um, the need to comment. There's definitely no subject object relationship anymore. It's just an awareness of all pervading awareness, awareness of the essence energy, which is God. And this is one of the most beautiful lessons in the recognition of the transcendence process. We're, we're transcending into awareness where the consciousness of the mind, the consciousness of the dreaming mind, localizes the consciousness of our, our body-mind activity, is letting go of our human consciousness. Consciousness is the realm of perception, and it's moving into awareness. Awareness is the realm of no mind or Christ mind, um, awakened awareness, or what people would sort of allude to as an enlightenment or an awakening but the body doesn't awaken, the person doesn't awaken. That which dreams us into seeming existence is awakening. And so the collective mind, the dreaming mind, is pure consciousness. And it exists in pure awareness. What is awareness? The mind of God. So when I say awareness, I mean the mind of God. When I say consciousness, I mean the mind of the dreamer, whose true nature is awareness too. But while it he dreams, we call that I call that consciousness. Different teachers use slightly different explanations, and very often they confuse the two and try and mean exactly the same thing. I make a very distinct difference between, and I know it's all concessions of the truth, but awareness is the realm of source, God, spirit, and consciousness is the realm of the dreaming mind. Christ's mind asleep is conscious. Christ mind awake is aware. Okay, so why wait for heaven? And this is now not another philosophical construct, spiritual construct. This is truly why wait for heaven, meaning why wait for happiness? Heaven is happiness, eternal happiness. Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes, not aware they're in it. You're in the light, light awareness. So when I say light, it's not love and light and bliss bunny nonsense. It's simply light means awareness. It's a lit mind in awareness. The light is in them now. The light's always been here. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. It's a cup of tea is more exciting than enlightenment. Um, you know, um, <laughs> Just about everything in this world is more exciting than enlightenment. It's simply a recognition of awareness. And it's the most gentle experience that the human goes through. It's a gradual process. Very few 
humans on this world um, awaken instantly. You get stories of the Ramana Maharishis, the Jesus who at the age of 12 was teaching in the temple. Um, they came through um, the, the, the aspect of them that incarnated came through with a, a high level of conscious awareness, conscious awareness. So conscious, still in the dream, awareness, bridging into the infinite divine mind. Enlightenment is but a recognition. Light is not of the world, yet the world exists in the light. The bodies exist in the world, exist in the light. The entire universe exists in light. But while it's seen as objects but with space and time, it is in the mind. And yet it's all in the light. Because if you could see truly, you can't, of course, see truly. But if you could, all you would see is light. You wouldn't see a, dis a difference between the hand and an object and the rest of the universe. It would all be one indivisible whole, one indivisible light shining forever. The light came with you from your native home. So the light is not in the world, yet you who bear the light are alien as here as well. Alien because you dream you're somewhere where you're not. The light came with you from your native home. Why? It's still in you. you. You never left home and stayed with you because it is your own. You are the real essence of you, not what appears. The real essence of you, or sometimes we call soul, is pure light. And your soul and my soul and God's soul is identical. It's made from the same essence. It's made from God's essence, loving essence. It is the only thing you bring with you from him who is your source. So with you, it's not like you've come from somewhere to somewhere else. You've gone into your dream. And even though you've now localized in your dream, you've brought that light with you and with the localized character, the light is inside the localized character. The light is in the dreamer's mind. The light is, the dreamer's in the light. Okay. We don't have awareness. We exist in awareness. Nothing has awareness. It exists in awareness. It becomes aware of the awareness when it dissolves its idea of separation. Why? Because it's made from the same essence as the light, as the awareness. It is the only thing you bring into the dream. The rest of you isn't real. What's real is the light in you, as is the whole light of the dream, as is the light of the mind that dreams it. It shines in you because it lights your home and leads you back to where it came from, where it came from, and you are at home. You've never left the light. You've never left awareness. You've never left God. The light cannot be lost. Awareness cannot be lost. If you go back and, you know, if I was to ask you, who are you? Or who did this and who witnessed your life? You'd say, I did. I am. It's the I. The I is that which is the observer, which observes its own awareness. Eventually, the I dissolves and there's just awareness. Just Christ mind joins with one indivisible God mind, God awareness. Light cannot be lost. And so when people think, oh, you've reached something or you've achieved something, you haven't. You've just let go of the filters of separation, the filters of a separate body-mind identity. Why wait to wait? Why wait to find it in the future or believe it has been lost already or was never there? You exist in the light. It can so easily be looked upon with arguments that prove it is not there it becomes ridiculous. So if you go back into your memory and you realize you've throughout your life, you've had glimpses where you just stood still and were aware of something much larger than yourself. It's the very reason people that embark on a spiritual journey have always felt alien in the world. Because what makes you feel alien is the awareness of the awareness. It says this isn't real. It's not that the world isn't real for you. It's not that you come from some fairy planet somewhere else. It's just that in your, in your current consciousness, your consciousness isn't real. And that's what makes you feel alien. Because consciousness is alien. Awareness is natural. Who can deny the presence of what he beholds in him? The presence, the heartbeat, the energy flowing through you. It is not difficult to look within. For there all vision starts. And vision is how we truly 
see as awareness. There is no sight, be it of dreams or from a truer source that is not but the shadow of the scene through inward vision. Everything is pointing to the reality of awareness. Their perception starts and there it ends. It has no source but this. Perception is in the realm of consciousness. Consciousness is the dreaming mind. The peace of God is shining in you now. You are aware that it's shining in you because you are in it. And from your heart extends around the world. In actual fact, the heart center is our source center, is our light, is our awareness. Not the physical heart, but the heart center. It's symbolic. We point to the chest, but it's purely symbolic. It's not localized in a part of the body. Don't get into the magical nonsense. It pauses to caress each living thing. Why? Because each living thing is in the mind and leaves a blessing with it that remains forever and forever. What it gives must be eternal, for it is eternal. It removes all thoughts of the ephemeral and the valueless. People place things in events. Objects are gone. There's just awareness left. It brings renewal to all tired hearts, hearts that have given up, hearts that are lost, hearts that feel betrayed or hurt, or whatever the case may be, and lights all vision as it passes by. So seeing becomes vision. You'll know all those that are touched by this light. And of course, those that are everyone's touched, but only certain, certain people respond because certain people are willing to find it. All of its gifts are given everyone. And everyone unites in giving thanks to you and you who have and you who have received. And this is why this course is a course for teachers. A course in miracles, a course for teachers. Why? Because it's calling you to be the light. It's calling you to call your siblings home because they're all characters in our dreaming lo as localizations of our dreaming mind. The shining in your mind reminds the world of what it has forgotten. And the world restores the memory to you as well. Why? Because we're all mirrors. The world mirrors our miracle mindedness. So when you realize awareness, you've moved into miracle mindedness, Christ mind. And as you see the world as healed, the world mirrors a healed world for you. People who are not healed, people who have un unforgiven thoughts, attack thoughts, trying to find peace in this world, will see an unpeaceful world. They'll see a world of vengeance. When you become peace internally, it's shown you. And then you go out into the world and you mirror the world for them. But remember this, people that are at war will not see the peace in you. People that are at war with themselves will war with themselves and think you're attacking them. Only the untrustworthy don't trust. Only the cheaters accuse other people of cheating. Only the liars accuse other people of lying. Why? They only see their own sin. They're looking at the splinter in your eye while they have a log in there. People that are untrustworthy cannot trust themselves because of their own internal perversion, okay? Whatever the perversion may be. Don't think of perversion only as sexual. It's often just as deviant, but it, it, it touches all realms, okay? From you, salvation radiates with gifts beyond all measure, given and returned. Because as you give, it's received. Why? You give to the oneself. To you, the giver of the gift, does God give thanks. Why? The father in which you exist knows you're asleep, you the dreaming son. He has no idea of the activities of your dreaming mind. But as you share, you the dreaming son, because you're taking the first dreamer position, you share the light as a localization in the dream with the other localizations in the dream, the dreamer awakens unto himself. You don't awaken, you just realize I don't exist except as the dreamer that's dreamt all the out. And in his blessing, does the light in you shine brighter, adding to the gifts you have to offer to the world? Being attacked by a, a, a domestic lion. Yep. <laughs> the peace of God can never be contained. Why? Because you're in it. You're in the light. You're in the peace. Who recognizes within himself, it within himself, must give it because you realize I'm in it. And the means for giving it are in his understanding. He forgives because he recognized 
the truth in him. And you realize, I'm just dreaming this up. I dreamt this up in order to keep myself dreaming. Now that I realize I dreamt it up, everybody that seemed to attack me, I created those experiences to keep me bound to the dream. Now that I realize I'm awakening to self, the dreamer, I let these activities, these stories of all these characters go. The peace of God is shining in you now and, and all living things. Why? Because you and all what appears living in this universe is in the dreaming mind, which is in God's mind, which is in God's peace, which is in God's light. In quietness, it is acknowledged. Quietness is the answer, is the key here. Universally, silent stillness, return to silent stillness and gratitude is returning to the true nature, the essence of what you are. For what your inward vision looks upon is your, is your perception of the universe. So if you see a cleared slate within, you'll see a cleared state, slate without. If you see peace within, you'll recognize peace without. If you see love within, you'll recognize love without. Because the world is a mirror of what's really happening in you, the dreaming mind. Not just you as the localization. Like I said, three lessons ago, we move into the first dreamer position, not in dream, not of dream, not, not into the position of dream characters in the dream, but that which dreams the dream character. Every night you go to sleep, every night you dream of hundreds of people with total details as if they've got their own minds and their own opinions and their own stories. In the same way, you, the dreamer, is dreaming up this entire universe. We all take responsibility for being the dreamer. And here's the answer. Sit quietly and close your eyes. The light within you is sufficient. The awareness in you is sufficient. Don't try and find something. Don't try and discover something or feel something. There's no feelings here at all. There's no emotions whatsoever. It's just a silent abide. And while you abide in silence, the filters are being cleared. You don't awaken. Awakening is done for you. All you need to do is be willing to be woken up. Be willing to forgive. So that forgiving is getting rid of the obstacles to peace, the filters. And with your forgiveness comes the fear of the future gets dissolved too. Can't dissolve the fear of the future. You dissolve unforgiven thoughts. And naturally, as the unforgiven thoughts are dissolved, forgiven, the fear of the future disappears. And then the faith in God, the trust in God comes because you have it firsthand of what that essence energy is like. It alone has power to give the gifts of sight to you, the gifts of awareness. Exclude the outer world. Exclude the thoughts. We've now done the, the internal direct path investigation. We're not going to do that every time we meditate. We just sit in silent abidance, abidance and we just be still. And when a minute of thought tries to interrupt, you say, no, thanks. And you do that daily. Whenever an attack thought comes, when someone says something and you want to overthink it and you want to over strategize it and you want to try and understand it and find 20 books to reference it, you don't. You just put it down. You just return to silence. Don't try and understand anything. There's nothing in this world to be understood. Nothing. Nothing I've said can be understood. I could teach this all day long. You won't grasp it fully until you grasp what you are fully. And you can only grasp what you are fully when you realize you are the silence. Because God is the silence. And the silence is not standing still and it's not boring. It's filled with life. It's filled with energy. In quietness, it is acknowledged universally. For what your inward vision looks upon is your perception of the universe. Remember this. Stop attacking the world and blaming it for whatever. Sit quietly and close your eyes. And people say to me, it's so difficult. Keep suffering until, you, you've, until you've burnt out all your suffering. And then you'll have no choice but to sit quietly. The light within you, and within you is sufficient. It alone has power to give the gift of sight to you. That's it. Exclude thoughts. Exclude the outer world. These thoughts you think are with him. Okay. For honest thoughts, untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself, become the holy messengers of God himself. Sit quietly. No thoughts. The light within you is sufficient. It alone has the power to heal because that is the grace of God. What is the grace of God? It's, grace means patience. Patience of God. He waits for you to be ready. Exclude the outer world. 
and your thoughts fly to the peace within because the peace within is the is the essence of what you are it's the void we all avoid it's the void that's not empty it's the void that is filled with the light filled with awareness filled with the truth filled with god's reality and that silent thought knows the way for honest thoughts silent thoughts are honest thoughts the only thoughts that are honest are silent so are they a thought no they're awareness untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself that you hope to gain to make yourself happy be still and know i am and these quiet untainted honest thoughts become the holy messengers of god himself why because they're pointing to you to god's natural essence god's natural nature god's essential nature silent stillness peace when you go quiet the silence is god the silence is peace the silence is joy because the silence is going to move through you and this minute's peace moves it becomes joy and when you know you have peace and enjoy it joyous movement together peace and joy encapsulate the essence of our true self unconditional love because if there was just joy and peace there's no judgment there's no conditions there's just love these are the thoughts you think with god you're not actually thinking anything you're emptying the mind it's the thoughtless thought silence is god silence is your true nature they recognize their home silent stillness and they point surely to their source where god the father and the son are one in silent stillness god's peace is shining on them but they must remain with you as well for they were born within your mind as yours was born in god's so you the dreamer it's talking to you the dreamer that's dreamt up the universe Peace is within you because you're made from the peace of God, a peace of God. They lead you back to peace from where they came, but to remind you how you must return in silence. They, they heed your father's voice when you refuse to listen, and your father's voice is silent. It's why people can't hear God. And when they say they do, they're making up their own stories. They're hearing their inner self. And at best, their highest self. And they urge you to gently accept his word for what you are. Silent stillness and peace. Instead of fantasies and shadows. They remind you that you are the co-creator of all things that live. The universe. God is creator of essence, light. Creator of things is you, the dreaming mind. When you awaken dreaming mind, you are the Christ, you are the Son, the creation of God. And so as you are created, so you create too. But while you dream, you make things. Whereas the peace of God is shining in you, it must shine in them. Why? Because you are in the light. And whatever you've created in your dream is in the light with you, dreaming Holy Son of God. We practice coming nearer to the light in us today, center sink into the void we take our wandering thoughts and gently bring them back to where they fall in line with the thoughts we share with god what are the thoughts we share with god silent stillness we will not let them stray another question another investigation oh what does this mean it means nothing nothing means anything i don't know anything i don't know shit there's nothing to know everything i thought i knew Four degrees and two doctorates means nothing. All the experiences, the places I've been to, 52 countries, CEO, of multinational, means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. I think I have a master's in marketing. I know nothing. I, I, I understand the psychology of human. I know nothing. I know only of illusions. The only thing we can know while we dream is illusion. True knowing is silent stillness. That's the reality of what we are. And they'll fall in line with the thoughts we share with God. We will not let them stray. We will let the light within our minds direct them to where to come home. We have betrayed them by thinking we think. Ordering them that they be departed from us. We hate the silent stillness. We call it boring. Okay. We feel like we're worthless when we're doing no thing. 
doing not doing is the only way. But now we call them back and wash them clean of strange desires and disordered wishes. We restore to them the holiness of their inheritance. Thus are our minds restored with them. And we acknowledge that the peace of God still shines in us, always has, always will, and from us to all living things that share our life, for we are life itself, and all the activity of our dream is life itself, but we see it as things and people and places. It's just pure energy. It's just pure light. This is just a concept for now, perhaps for you. For me, it's my reality now. We will forgive them all absolving all the world from what we thought it did to us when we made it and made it behave in the way we believed we were. It punished us because we punished ourselves. Everything has ever happened to you. You made it happen. Whether you were aware of it or not, when you become aware, you realize I was responsible for all of it. For it is we who make the world as we would have it. Now we choose that it be innocent, devoid of sin, and open to salvation. You chose the world to be your enemy. You chose to be an alien here, but you still wanted to come here and be an alien here and feel ostracized and feel victimized and feel unworthy. You did this to yourself. Now we remember the world is an extension of ourselves. We choose to call it friend and bring it back into ourselves and love all of it. And we lay our savings Saving blessings on it, as we say. The peace of God is shining in me now. And I encapsulate the entire universe into myself because the activities of my dreaming mind. Let all things shine upon me in that peace. And let me shine my peace on all of that. And let me bless them with the light in me. For I am the light. I am the light, which is the extension of God's light. One indivisible being called God. We call it God. It's just light. It's just energy. It's just peace. It's just love. It's just happiness. Energy, light, God, the peace we are is in us all. Acknowledge it within you and you'll see it in the world. Don't look for it in the world in order to bring it into you. Become it because the world is what it is. The world is a reflection. It's a mirror. It's all happening here. Be you that. Be you that knowingly. Holy Son of God. Amen. I'll stop there and take one or two quick questions.